Hi, my name is Darian St. Martin and welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things English and IELTS. Today's video is a continuation of my top 10 series where I share my personal advice for tackling each of the IELTS sections. In this episode, we will talk about speaking, my favorite module. In addition, I've prepared a great gift for everyone who watches this video attentively. Let's rock this! The first tip, you are able to control your own emotions and attitude to any situation in your life, including the IELTS speaking exam. Really, my biggest advice would be to work on your own mindset first. I know so many people who would fail their test just because of being too nervous and anxious, even with nice English. So I don't want any one of you to make the same mistake. I always approach the speaking section as a talk with a good acquaintance, and you should too. I remember to smile, be friendly, relaxed, sound confident, and most importantly, natural. I mean it. Natural speech is really what the examiner is on the lookout for. The second tip is probably the most important, and it builds on what I have just said. Strive to speak as naturally as possible. The examiner doesn't want to hear mechanical answers, even though the grammar is impeccable. This means you have to listen to how native English speakers talk on a daily basis and note how they do it. There is a lot to it. Intonation, pronunciation, accent, vocabulary, grammar, context. Let me read this sentence with the Russian and English ways of talking. I am Russian for your record. In, in our language, we don't really have a broad diapason of tonality, whereas the English do have very noticeable ups and downs in their speaking. Note the difference between the two. I bet you must have missed the whole movie. Oh, such a pity. I bet you must have missed the whole movie. Oh, such a pity! See how the range of my intonation changes. This has nothing to do with grammar, but speaking with the natural tone will help you score more. The third tip. Learn how to use idioms and idiomatic language. I bet you have heard lots of different tips that sometimes might even contradict each other about idioms. And maybe you have even googled lists of idioms for your speaking. Sadly, this will not lead you to the high quality performance for scoring 7 plus. Let's first make it clear that idiomatic language is a broad term that encompasses idioms, phrasal verbs, collocations and turns of phrase. Moreover, Cambridge defines phrases like on the contrary, in the long term, as idiomatic language as well. These have nothing to do with it's raining cats and dogs, do they? What I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't limit yourself to a certain random list of idioms you found somewhere on the internet. Instead, focus on how natives use idiomatic language. Idioms are quite rare in their speech. They definitely don't appear in every single sentence. It is very weird for a person to say, there has been a sea change for my job, but this challenge is a piece of cake for me. I really think that adapting to new situations is my cup of tea. No one talks like this in real life, although on IELTS it is possible to hear a candidate trying to squeeze in several idioms into one answer. Hence, maintain the balance. Native use phrasal verbs more often than idioms, and it is good for you because they also count towards idiomatic language. In my guide on frequent IELTS mistakes, I will illustrate how idioms and phrasal verbs are used in a wrong way and what is the best approach to use them. To receive this guide, follow me on Instagram, it's dsanmartin, and send me the key phrase speaking mistakes in direct messages, so that I can share with you the link to the free guide I put together for you. The fourth tip, practice sample questions in front of a mirror or record yourself. There are honestly many ways of practicing, but this one has been particularly beneficial for me. You should literally take a sample IELTS speaking question from a Cambridge IELTS book, Colin's book for speaking, my Telegram channel, or any other source online. There are a lot. Try to answer it standing in front of the mirror so that you can see your facial expressions and have an impression you're talking to someone. Make sure to record your answer as well. Then listen to it again and note where you made a mistake or hesitated too much. You may as well jot down any grammar you got wrong or were uncertain about. Try answering this question again then and correct all the mistakes you had previously made. 
The fifth tip, never give short one word or even one sentence replies. I thought this was obvious, but then some of my students think it's okay to answer, yes, I am, or no, I didn't like movies when I was a child, and stop. This will not do the trick. On the contrary, you should aim at expanding your answer as much as it's acceptable by the speaking part you are replying to. The examiner wants to hear a range of synonyms, grammatical structures, how you are sequencing ideas and managing coherence. It's just not possible when you answer in one sentence. And for this, sadly, you will be penalized. The sixth tip don't be shy to correct yourself. You might think that the key to your performance is fluency that is rated over accuracy, but this is just not the case. In fact, the examiner wants to hear clear and fluent speech with accuracy being more important. Why? Because anyone can be quickly rambling on, just saying anything they have in mind without paying attention to grammar and richness of vocabulary. This is actually something you can easily notice when traveling. Tourists or natives where English is not the official language can be very loud and confident, speaking very fast while their language is just filled to the brim with mistakes, ambiguous word choice and thick accent that makes it almost impossible to understand them, especially for a person who is not prepared for this. While this level of English knowledge might be completely enough for traveling and expressing your ideas, this is certainly not on par with the level you are required to demonstrate for an academic test like IELTS. Therefore, don't hesitate to correct yourself if you noticed a mistake. This is much better than ignoring the problem and stacking up errors on top of each other. The seventh tip, don't learn answers by heart or use cliches. The thing is, there are millions of candidates taking IELTS each year, 6 million to be precise, and the majority of them think that there is a magic list of predicted questions and answers to them, learning which they will score high. The same applies to lists of words or phrases circulating online that make candidates believe they will get target band scores should they start using this vocabulary in every single sentence. We will talk about list of words in the next tip, but now let's focus on full answers. There is only one reason for learning possible answers by heart, to train your brain remember the structure and approach to a high scoring answer. The more of them you learn, the easier it will be for your brain to come up with its own grammar structures and vocabulary on the test day. Sadly, candidates rarely learn answers to enrich their vocabulary. Usually they do it in order to predict a question at the test and give the examiner a pre-prepared answer. Unfortunately, this only leads to a failure, because of different reasons. Mostly, it is almost impossible to predict what you will be asked at the test. Second, it is very hard to recall a long answer word by word and maintain fluency, say it in full without pauses. Any hesitation will only show the examiner that your response is not authentic, and for giving a completely memorized response you will be awarded band score of zero. Another easy way for the examiner to find out that you are cheating is to pay attention to how the level of your English changes throughout your speaking test. Usually, the language level of the memorized response is much higher than of the rest of the answers, and it's very eye-catching for a trained examiner. So you will be drawing a wild card and the chances of failure are much higher than otherwise. In my guide with common speaking mistakes, I will also address why using cliches like I want to take this chance to tell you about in the beginning of each answer is detrimental to your high score, and for whom this might be actually useful. The eighth tip, don't learn words from lists. This builds on, on what I've just said in the previous tip. The danger here is changing focus from what will actually help you score high. The thing is, when you're forced to learn dozens of unrelated words, it results in spending time and effort on storing information in your brain that you will be just unlikely to use. Write in the comments if you have ever had this feeling of learning tons of words, but then not being able to use them in speaking. This usually happens when you learn new vocabulary out of the context. The most effective way to learn new words is to notice them while reading or listening to something in English. You are able to pick up the tone of the words, if it's used in a formal or informal context, 
If it's a part of a certain phrase or collocation, then you can also look up several usages of this word in different sentences and pay attention to its synonyms. It's even more helpful to compose a couple of sentences yourself to better remember the spelling. Honestly, it's much more beneficial to use common vocabulary correctly than to try to incorporate advanced vocabulary that you're just unsure about. The ninth tip. There are no right or wrong answers in this speaking test. The examiner will assess you on how well you are able to express your ideas and opinions in English, regardless of the accuracy of your arguments, meaning you can safely make up all examples that are supposed to be from your own experience. No one is going to check if they happened in reality or not. If you feel discouraged because of the lack of ideas, try to change your attitude. Questions on IELTS usually concern general topics we all read or talk about every day, like education, technology or society. If you can support a conversation about these topics in your native language, then you have ideas. It's just the lack of grammar and vocabulary skills that makes it difficult to express them in English. And this is what you must be working on. And finally, the tenth tip. Try to avoid repeating the words used in the examiner's question. Use your own words to show the examiner your full ability. So when the examiner asks, tell me something about the city you live in, it's probably best that you don't start your answer with, okay, let me tell you something about the city I live in. That makes sense, right? Just keep in mind that you must showcase your broad range of vocabulary, so paraphrase as much as possible. Now, I'm sure you want to get the speaking mistakes guide I told you about. It contains even more practical tips from my experience on how to score high in speaking. Remember, to receive this gift, follow me on Instagram and send me the key phrase speaking mistakes in the direct messages. Simple. Thank you so much for spending your time productively with me today. You can find even more videos about IELTS preparation on my channel. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!